Welcome to College Street Victory Church. You're listening to the weekly podcast with Pastor Matt Funk. All right, Logan, you know I get to start. So, good. Logan is my uh, second born son. It's true facts. We are both second born. I was second born in my family. And, it, and it ha- I know I told you already, some of you, but it has been said that the second born has the wisdom. <laughs> just, just <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Something about just like they just watch a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that's what's been said. So, anyway, so you got a pack yep. of second borns here <laughs> to say. Okay, so just a couple of things. Again, why diners and drive ins? And, um, you know, uh, and in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says there's nothing new under the sun. So again, Jesus is not surprised. God is not surprised when we go through problems or when evil raises its ugly head. God's not like, oh my goodness, I never thought that that (laughs) something like that could happen, right? He's not surprised. Um, But the thing is, all good movies are made of good conquering evil. Are they not? Totally. You know, every once in a while they try to like mix it up and like Superman and Batman fight each other and both die yeah. or whatever but that doesn't make any sense it doesn't it's just it's, right? it's a waste I mean, of time <laughs> trying to figure that out I mean I don't know maybe they're anyways you know what I'm saying so all good movies it's usually like Kate there's a problem often the best movies are ones that we can relate to in some ways like maybe you weren't bit by a radioactive spider but I mean there's always kind of those yeah. themes that we feel we can kind of identify in and then somebody comes and saves the day or good conquers evil and so yeah. that's a uh, that's often that but the great thing about doing it here at church today is it's a way that we can kind of show you in a way your life and how to apply the word of God to it so it's kind of a fun way to do that um, another reason okay so if you if you're new here I mean if you have been here for a while I hope that you know this already but kids are a really big deal to us they are a really really big deal to God they are his favorite okay that's right yeah <laughs> And so in, I'm just going to read just quickly. Uh, we're going to be in Luke a, a bit today. Um, I'm going to start just Luke chapter 22, and I'm going to start in, it's all good. You can read the whole thing after lunch if you like, but start in verse 24. So again, keeping in mind that uh, we're talking about the disciples, we're talking about Jesus, but keep in mind that the disciples, followers of Jesus, they went with him and helped him do ministry and then went on after he went back to heaven, you know, to carry that on. But they weren't, um, they didn't go to Bible college. They weren't totally mature in every way. They were, they were following Jesus. They were learning and growing. They were young adults. So here we're picking up some young adults having a chat. So a dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. It's funny how human nature doesn't change too much. Uh, hasn't since Bible times, hey? I mean, you guys don't talk about that at home, though. Who's no, the not, never. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yes. But anyways, Jesus said to them, the king of the Gentiles lorded over them and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. I was reading in my devotions too. I think it was Hebrews chapter... Do you just uh, bear with me for a minute? Hebrews chapter one. Where's now? I'm tired. Where's Hebrews? I'm not tired. (laughs) Anyways, I'm just going to tell you about it. (laughs) But it was talking about he was speaking about angels, and and there's a verse in there that says God only says to Jesus, like, sit at my right hand while I make your enemies your footstool. But the angels are there also to they're to minister to all those who will receive salvation. So that's the purpose of angels is to serve as well. It's kind of just flipping the flow on kind of some some of the misconceptions that we have. But there's so many things, uh, so many differences between the kingdom of God and our practices, what we sometimes think is fair or normal or common sense in the world. It's not often the same, is it? No. No, because we think, well, well, that's not fair. Well, that's not how God works, you know? And even to Jesus doesn't say, treat people how they treat you. He says, treat people how I treat you, you know? And we say, yeah, don't, and forgiveness too. It's not like, 
forgive when they say sorry and make it right. No, forgive as the Lord forgave you. That's true. Yep. So that's kind of a little bit what I want to lead off in that today is, you know, Jesus said the youngest, you know, are going to be the leaders. And and uh, I'm going to just pass it over to you, Logan, in a minute. But yeah, I just wanted to set this up. Logan's got some PowerPoints for you today. He's going to deliver the word of God. He's going to deliver some wisdom for your life, no matter what age you are, because I have, I've heard this message and it is very, very, very good. So I invite you to open up some opportunity to write down what he's going to deliver to you today, whether it's a piece of paper or it's your device or whatever. I second what my husband said, get ready. He doesn't talk slow. Just saying, he's going to (laughs) try, (laughs) but he knows what he means to say. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Logan, you take it from here. Alrighty. So this scene had a lot in it, Uh, but yeah, that kind of pretty much sets up the entire plot of the movie. So the ifs, their imaginary friends, they want to be there for their kids, right? But over time they grow away from them. Busy with all the responsibility that comes with growing up. They lose that childlike faith that allowed them to see their ifs and all their efforts to be there for them. And you know, as silly as that whole conflict kind of sounds, there's actually a lot of parallels in that to our real life relationships with God. Just like in Luke 18, 17, Jesus says, truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God, like a little child, will never enter it. So point two is pursue childlike faith. You know, in this part of the Bible, the disciples are trying to shoo kids away from Jesus. They think there'll be a distraction to the message of faith he's trying to speak. The ironic part about that, though, is Jesus corrects them. He goes so far as to say that they're the prime example of what our faith should look like. You know, I can tell you from firsthand experience of working in the kids' ministry that most kids are pretty bold. And, you know, they're a bit spontaneous, and sometimes we regard that as a bad thing, but it's kind of what makes them so great. You know, that's the thing, right? I like that spontaneous. That's such a a good (laughs) euphemism. (laughs) I mean, but it's kind of like, it's what's so awesome about them. Because like, if you think about it, while we're overthinking, you know, sharing our faith and all the things that could go wrong with that, you just walk right up to people and do it. And nothing bad happens. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Or another example is like, you know, while we're so busy trying not to get our hopes up to avoid disappointment, mm-hmm. kids make it their mission to assume the best of everyone and yeah, everything, and yeah, it's awesome. Do. Yeah. Say that one part again. Say, say that one part again. Real slow. Okay, ready? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is good. That's power. Yeah. You know, sometimes we, we spend a lot of our time trying not to get our hopes up to avoid disappointment, but kids make it their mission to, you know, see the best in everyone and everything, and that's, you know... That's a great way to approach life. It is. Yes. And yeah. you know, we, <laughs> you can clap for that if you want. <laughs> and you know, we, while the wisdom we've gained, like is important and there's good stuff there. It's, and it's not all for nothing. We can fall into the trap of getting stuck in our heads, yeah. like so stuck that we forget to live and we forget who we're living for. Right. Come on. Right. Man. Yeah. And, you know, like for a lot of even just my grade seven year, believe it or not, I battled with feelings of stress, tiredness and burnout. Mm. Well, why is that? Because I was constantly overthinking things. Mm. Whenever we were assigned a big project in school, for example, that was all I could think about. During weekends, I was so determined to make sure I'd maximize that time off that I never really relaxed, Mm. you know. So like having anything slightly out of place would just have a huge effect on me because I had let that stuff consume my mind. But all of that could have been avoided if I had shifted my focus from trying to have control to trusting and honoring God. Mm, so good. Yeah. You. you know, there's a perfect verse that goes along in that. I like what Matthew 6.33 says. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen. Which is really good. Yep. Um, yeah, but at a certain point, I realized I had to stop letting all of these things take up so much space in my mind and give more of my focus to what was important. Growing closer to God and inviting others to join me on that amazing journey. Yeah, come on. Despite how much time and energy I was saving from not having to worry about all that stuff so much, nothing really changed. I was just as successful and productive and organized, only it wasn't taking so much out of me. Hmm. And you know, while you might probably have a much greater list of responsibilities than whatever seventh graders <laughs> choosing to worry about, I mean, I want you to, I want you to know that God's got this. Yeah. Amen. Come on. (laughs) 
But the takeaway is this. Don't get so caught up in life that you forget who you're living for. Ooh, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so good, Logan. I just want to jump back. You, yeah, you know what part to you about. So when you talked about how you were just as productive and just as successful when you shifted your focus, but you didn't have the stress yeah. and the tiredness and the burnout and the worry. Yeah. And I love that verse, seek first the kingdom of God. You know, that's the end. Then all these things shall be added to you. And that's a matter of priorities, right? When we put God in first place, then our other priorities can find their place. Fall right? into place. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I'm going to say it again, but um, I I have heard people say before, I won't be able to be, make it to church this Sunday because I just really got to get caught up on this or I just really got to do that. I I don't know that that's ever worked for somebody. I've had that conversation with where that taking that Sabbath or taking that time away from God has helped them catch up. No. No. <laughs> and it's, it's not how it goes. No, and it's similar. And it's the same with the tithe too. You know, when we were newly married, you're like, well, if 100% doesn't work, how is 90% going to work? But 90% with God's blessing works. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the things too, we, um, we talked about at the Young Adults Conference, we were privileged to be put up on stage and they could ask whatever questions they wanted and the very first question was about um, physical relationships. And, you know, my first, my very first thought is like, any decision you make in life, you want it to be under the blessing of God. That's true. You know, so it's putting him first and it's doing God's way. And how do we find out about God's way, right? Yes. Spending time in his word, as you do. So, <laughs> so good job. But no, I just think that's so good. But if I could just get you guys to stand with me and I'll invite... Um, the band back to the stage and Logan you can stay here too but it is so true how we can we can complicate things and oftentimes too and we we can even come to church and feel like there's a piece of us that we don't have together or maybe we feel like yeah we're not there yet or whatever. And when Pastor Matt says, we do our best to create as a, a come as you are atmosphere, it's because we mean it. Because yeah. Jesus didn't say anywhere in the Bible, come to me when you got yourself sorted out. <laughs> he says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. And, and he says, yeah, he says to, to come to him. And so I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes and just kind of focus in for a minute don't worry about anybody else in the room but when we come to know the Lord and we come to Jesus we are the Bible says we are born again so we are like a baby <laughs> you know we're fully needing to trust and rely on God and we're like children that are, are growing and learning and the definition the true definition of I don't know, true true definition of a child is a, is a mismanager and so meaning that we need help we can't we can't put all the pieces in place by ourselves. But Jesus knows that. So when we come to know the Lord, it's the beginning of a journey. But the Bible says that unless you become like a child, you have that childlike faith that expects good things, that has hope that that um, that Jesus is who he says he is and that he is for you and that he wants to hear your prayers. And you know, it's bold enough to say, God, this is what I'm asking for without beating around the bush 10 times. You know, just like Logan was saying about the kids, when kids pray, they just say what they mean. They say, dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Help my plans to go well. Help my boo-boo to go away. Amen. You know, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I took a cue from them when, and when I pray back to them, if they get, get hurt, I said, dear, I say, dear Jesus, take please take the, all the pain away, you know, instead of saying, Lord, if it's your will, if you want to, if you're, you know, if you're in a good mood, would you take care of my child? No, I pray those bold prayers back for them. But I just want to encourage you, if you're here today and you haven't taken that step to start a relationship with Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity to do that today, knowing that it is a beginning it's a beginning of getting to know him, getting to know his ways, getting and how they're different than the ways we've tried that haven't worked. And I'm going to ask my son Logan to just lead us through a prayer, just um, inviting him into our hearts and just confessing him as Lord. So 
Logan, if you will lead us and I will, I will repeat after you. And if the church, you can join me in repeating. That would be great. Okay. So, okay. All right. All right. Well, dear God. Dear God. Um, I admit. I admit. That I make mistakes. That I've made mistakes. And I need your grace. And I need your grace. But I believe. But I believe that you died on the cross. That you died on the cross. And took that punishment. And took that punishment. For my mistakes. For my mistakes. And I choose. And I choose. To take that opportunity. Take that opportunity. And follow you. And follow you. For all my life. For all my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. And thank you for continuing to partner with us and for giving so generously to this ministry. If you would like to find out more about how you can partner with us, visit our website at www.wherepeoplematter.church and click the giving link. And don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends. See you next time.